Train wreck, bizarre, mind-boggling beyond belief. That's how one Jackson County homeowner describes property values. And when you take a good look, what he found is now the complete focus of a KCTV5 investigation. Here's investigative reporter Angie Racono. This is Preston Smith. He's a Jackson County homeowner, and he sits on the board that reviews your property taxes, so he has access to the county's information. He's completely disturbed by what's going on. He's now spending his own time and money to learn more. He has a background in statistics, and in his real-life job, he's hired to take a look at data, find the problem, and fix it. Here's his comprehensive look at Jackson County. Why are you doing this? Well, I tell you what, uh, and my, my family asked me that just about an hour ago before I came here. <laughs> They're like, uh, uh, what's, the, what's the point? And I said, the point is, we really need to try to, to we got to get this right for a lot of people. Preston Smith has heard from hundreds of homeowners. So have we. I'm not kind of flabbergasted. Start over with the correct formula. I mean, my God, how am I going to pay this? I might not be able to uh, live here. I think that is what people say because they want to pull on your heartstrings. People who are fi on fixed income, people who are having trouble buying their medicine. We have rights. We do. We have rights. This assessment is riddled with problems. I'm concerned about the, the way people have gotten their tax bills. I'm concerned about the way they've been notified. And I'm concerned about the whole process. And I know I'm just a, a little tiny piece in this, but I just want to try to make it right as best right that I can. Smith is a numbers guy, so he decided to buy MLS data for the last two years, which shows recent sales, true market value, 21,600 homes have changed hands. So Smith compared the real sale prices with the county's assessments for each and every one of those properties. He wanted to see how close they got. And I thought this, is, this can't be right. Uh, I sent it to a, a couple people and I said, here, uh, I, I can't believe there must be some data corruption going on here because it, it, it just, it, it doesn't add up. It's, it made no sense. So I started completely over, re-imported the whole data uh, from the get-go, and it, it came out exactly the same. What you are about to hear has been reviewed by lawyers, realtors, a former assessor, the state tax commission, and at least one top decision maker who has the power to change things. You know, this is so far off the mark. It's off 66% of the time, according to the county's own standards. That's right, when you check assessments on those recently sold homes, 21,600 of them, 66% of the time, it's just wrong. Jackson County, like most counties, has a wide range of where assessments should fall. Here's what it looks like, plus or minus 10% of true market value. So this is where assessments should land, in this wide green 20% range. But with recent sales, the working definition of true market value, Jackson County only lands here 34% of the time. That's a failing grade by any standard. But here's what makes you scratch your head. They already have the answers. More on that in a moment. First, let's look at how and why things fall apart. Take this property that was valued in 2017 at around 3,000. Then somehow it dropped in value for this assessment. It's now 2,500, which is puzzling because it was sold last summer for $385,000. That's probably because the county didn't catch there is a house on that land. And by the way, you can see an aerial picture of the house on Jackson County's own parcel viewer. And then there is this home that was valued in the 30s, then reassessed for $232,000 but it was actually sold for $27,000. So it appears this property is way off in the new assessment, but it's the opposite problem. I, I do not claim to be an appraiser or assessor, and, uh, but I can read a spreadsheet and there's no doubt that uh, those are the numbers. Smith points out the county should have known how off assessments are if they just looked at recent sales like he did. He points out there really are no excuses because when homes are sold, you have to file a certificate of value. So the county literally has the answers. They just have to click. And it's there in their own records. So that's twice they had the re record of the sale and it's pretty clear they, they didn't look at either one of them. So when Smith double checked sales, he used the county's own database. We did the same, his numbers are right. 
Smith plans to take this information and push for a new plan to cap sky-high assessments because this shows assessments for even recent sales are wildly inaccurate. When I put the proposal together for next Thursday at the Board of Equalization and, uh, and if uh, they think this is a, a totally stupid idea, at least I gave my best shot. One more thing. It's clear some sections of the counties win and others lose. Smith did a deeper analysis by zip code. If you take a look at this map, you can see the red zones. These are where homeowners were assessed a lot more than what they actually paid for their homes. So if you live in Levesey, the Plaza area, Sunset Hill, Fairmount, Mount Washington, or a specific section of Independence, you need to check your bill. And then, of course, there's also the green zones. And you can probably bet these people generally aren't appealing because these homes are assessed at a fraction of their assessed value. That's Pleasant Hill, historic Northeast section, and the east side section of Kansas City. We'll keep you posted on what happens next with your property taxes. Angie Ricono, KCTV5 News.